Oh, hello there. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever you may be. It just keeps getting worse and worse for Brian Callen just when he feels like he's past the worst of it and he can get back to going on the road and reclaiming his life and going on podcasts and telling the same old tired stories about muscular men that he's met along his way. Bam, he gets hit with another hammer blow. And for everybody out there that was saying, oh, what do you mean he didn't deal with it the right way? He did it the right way. He stood up to everybody in the mob. I told you he did it the wrong way. I've been stuck in this thing for a long time i've been bored at home during lockdown with nothing else to do but to keep an eye on people who i have no business keeping an eye on if you end up attacking very serious allegations with the moniker of cancel culture more likely or not guess what's gonna happen you're gonna get cancelled so he messed up if you would have just put his head underneath the sand right similar to what chris D'Elia did and just kept his mouth shut he probably would have been okay but the fact that he tried to go on the front foot and claim that the women that were trying to cancel him instead of maybe bringing up some actual credible reasons as to why he might have been a creep all those years ago again allegedly he would have been okay but he tried to fight fire with fire and got completely eviscerated and in case you're wondering what i'm talking about this is an update courtesy of the los angeles times it says the following brian callen gives up an effort to sue husband of woman who claims the comedian r-worded her of course i'm going to make sure that i keep all the monetization of this video so please forgive me the court says brian can has abandoned his quest to sue the husband of a woman who says yeah the comedian um had r-worded her on Monday, Callan's attorney filed a request asking the Los Angeles Superior Court to dismiss Callan's lawsuit against Gabriel Tigerman, whose wife, Catherine Fior Tigerman, claims that Callan assaulted her in 1999. Tigerman was one of the four women described um, who described Callan's alleged misconduct in July 2020, um, Times investigation that the stand up comedian adamantly denied all those accounts. It's only been under a year since this stuff has happened only a year and if you just would have been a little bit more quiet and tweeted the allegations with the severity they deserved and tried to maybe fight fire with some facts or maybe with some compassion or maybe with some understanding he probably would have been okay now that's not to say that i'm a big fan of cancel culture like i said prior i don't vibe with it at all i think the people that should decide whether or not you have a career or not are your fans it shouldn't be these big media organizations or journalists with a vendetta it should be your fans who decide nah you're a piece of crap we're not going to support you anymore but still he didn't help himself in this situation all he had to do was treat the situation with the severity that it deserved come and meet the meet these women that you know in in the middle somehow if you could i'm not sure how that would have panned out but regardless can you really say that Brian Callen's in a far better position than what Crystal Lee is in career wise? Could you possibly see Crystal Lee back on the Netflix movie before Brian Callen? Yes. Will it either happen? Probably not. But he gave himself at least a chance of some semblance of reclaiming his career. Less than two months after the Time story was published, Callen launched a legal effort to seek unspecified damage from Gabriel Tigerman, who Callen claimed intended to have Callen blacklisted, destitute, and never to work again. According to his September 2020 complaint, Callen argued that Tigerman had embarked on an ongoing campaign to destroy the comic's livelihood by reaching out to via email and Twitter to comedy clubs who planned to host Callen. On September the 14th, Tigerman tweeted that the venue that booked Callen was sending a very clear message that they support essays and don't believe in the victims now to be completely fair to Cannon, he does have a little bit of a point if you personally don't like what he's about and you maybe believe the allegations then you're more than welcome to tell your you know your friends and those people near you not to go and support him and you can also vote with your feet and not go calling up pacific clubs emailing them spamming whatever post they put out there and tagging them and saying hey you're gonna be uh, facilitating this essay duh, 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 duh. that's probably not the best way to go about things but you also have to recognize this is this woman's husband right so he's met her what recently in life she's basically shared this very distraught troubling experience that she had allegedly with brian kellen of course he's gonna go out and beyond above and beyond to make sure he defends his lady um honor or name in public and if that means trashing another comedian's um career aspirations then so be it i understand both sides it continues in response to Callan's lawsuit in November 2020, Tigerman's attorney filed an anti-slap motion. Anti-SLAPP. Um, SLAPP stands for Strategic Law... What's that? Strategic lawsuit against public participation are designed to protect um, meritless lawsuits that chill the exercise of the Third Amendment, First Amendment rights. In California, anti-slap um, statutes allowed the potential for an early lawsuit to dismissal if successful in the case. It would have required Callan to pay Tigerman's fees. Tigerman raised... 
$33,300 for such fees on GoFundMe. Wow, that's actually a decent amount that he raised on GoFundMe. Let's actually look at the, the thing itself. There we go. Help the Tigermans fight back. And as you can see there, he raised $33,300 um, of a raise of $50,000 goal. Now, the only thing that I'm confused about this, which I think you said he was happy about the goal raised, usually, if I'm not mistaken on GoFundMe, unless you reach your target goal amount, they don't actually give you the money, or am I mistaken? Or is it maybe, or they do that thing where if you reach over half, then you still get some of the money. I, I wonder what that was all about. But anyway, let's go back to the LA Times article. In January, Judge Monica Badger issued a tentative ruling in Tigerman's favor, stating that Callan did not meet his burden of demonstrating the probability of prevailing on his claim. Um, Callan's complaint is based on Tigerman's public and private communications with Callan's agent, performing venues regarding the published allegations of SA against Callan and therefore constituted conduct in furtherance of the exercise of constitutional right to speech in connection with the issue of public interest. How hilarious is that, right? The same comedians that are complaining or rallying against the desire and the need for freedom of speech now use that same thing in order to protect themselves and now get a case to smith on court because of freedom of speech. It must burn. President Batchner wrote that Cannon had no evidence suggesting that um, the absent Tickman's communication, the venues and agents would not have cancelled his contracts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, it just keeps getting worse and worse. This is so bad, man. So, so embarrassing. Following last summer's Times investigation, Callan was dropped by his talent agent's representative, um, the Creative Arts Agency, Innovative Imagine in August. A Netflix prank show he was set to make with Chris Lear was also scrapped prior, shortly after Chris Lear was accused of SA himself. Himself. Um, meanwhile, Callan said he forced to leave his cast media to find the kid, which he co-hosted with former UFC heavyweight Brandon Shaw, because advertisers would no longer support the program he was part of. He has since taken to Patreon to release his own podcast content for five dollars a month on his website. Callan currently has up-and-coming stand-up dates listed in Des Moines, Phoenix, Tampa, and San Antonio. Bruv, Amy Kaufman is not going to rest until Callan's career is a pile of burning embers of ash. Right? She is not going to rest. Like she's just doing everything in her power to ensure this guy doesn't be able to put food on her food on his table and to be honest i can't vibe with that it's hilarious to watch this whole thing you know play out but the way she keeps mentioning these other venues that he's performing at his show he has on patreon who is also a, a, aligned with it just feels like it's a kind of a it's purposely done to make sure to remind people who he's basically aligned himself with the venues are also allowing him to have a career so that so that people can go out and start like um council mobbing these venues and telling him to cancel his shows like i said if his career is meant to be is meant to burn out and fizzle out and disappear into a stream of nothingness then let it do so on its own accord you don't need to add petroleum to the fire do you know what i mean just leave it alone but again these modern day journalists at the moment when they decide you're their enemy it's basically over for you following judge uh bachelor's tentative ruling callum and tigerman came to an out-of-court settlement in march tigerman's lawyer alex Lizzo said his client did not pay any money okay to settle the case and was extremely pleased with the results of the absurd malicious lawsuit that was a desperate attempt to silence the brave survivors and advocates who spoke out against him so they sold out a case but no one paid any money i don't understand how that actually goes so if anyone knows about u.s law in that regard please let me know because I, I always assumed whatever you settle outside of court it means that you pay some money in order for it to go away maybe i'm wrong it continues um callan's attorney jesse b levin did not respond for formal requests of comment in a statement gabriel tingman who an actor has appeared on television shows such as silicon valley and supernatural vowed to speak out against callan until women are safe from him god almighty i kept telling you there was a wrong approach to go out and fight fire and fire and come out of the front foot i told you guys like no he did the right thing he's standing up for himself bruv there's no rule standing up against these sort of allegations the only way you stand up against it is actually providing real corroborating proof stone wall concrete proof that absolves you in any way shape or form the only other thing that you can do is go quiet for a bit respect the seriousness and the severity of the allegations and then try and come back on the other side but fight fire with fire and deeming sa allegations as cancel culture is always going to end in tears especially for someone like Callum, who's not even that famous in the first place fair enough if you're fucking whatever if you're the rock or somebody you could probably get away with it but if you're brian Callum, come on really with this dismissal survivors and their advocates should feel confident that they can speak the truth without fear of retribution even when their abusers have power and money with all that's publicly known now anyone who still hires Callan sends a clear message that they do not care about protecting women from this sexual predator mate 
he is going in. Gabriel Tickerman is really going in. He's doing everything in his power to support his lady and you cannot blame the guy for it. And if it happens to be that Callan's career has to be sacrificed in order for him to uphold the honour of his woman, then I guess that is the situation at hand. And if you check the, the GoFundMe itself, they're providing updates. People are still donating monies on there as well. Update, we won the case, case dismissed. It's with immense profound gratitude that we announced that the lawsuit has been dismissed this week. We won. Victims everywhere won. Advocates everywhere won one the money you donated was critical it allowed us to mount a defense against the serial <laughs> sexual predators the disparate and malicious attempt to silence us and to silence all victims and their advocates mate this is a horror show an absolute horror show of a situation absolute horror show of a situation and like i said previously he could have easily um went about this a much different way in order to you know get some positive resolution from this i still think they probably wouldn't have been more so because of the damage that was already done through chris Alea's allegations they had nowhere to hide really do you know what i mean after that basically happened no one was going to come out and defend these type of guys with these sort of allegations so it is what it is what do you think is going to happen next going forward do you think callan's going to be able to resurrect his career or do you think this is basically done personally i think it's completely over i think if he's happy being a podcaster and a stand-up comedian he's going to be perfectly fine to go on tour appear in people's podcasts little by little incrementally but in terms of regaining whatever position that he had with in terms of having a network tv deal in terms of having a potential of doing a stand-up comedy show on netflix just remember too right this was a guy who struggled to get his special on netflix when he was at his peak with the fire and the kid commanding let's say half a million views or quarter of a million views per episodes right and obviously being part of a very influential influential and funny duo in terms of the 10 minute podcast he still wasn't able to use that clout associated with joe rogan to get a netflix special how much more do you think this allegation is going to hurt and damage his possibility to do that as well this time around i think it's basically buried that that aspiration um, for the foreseeable future now again like i said if he's happy to go on tour if he's happy to have his own podcast and kind of have his basically his creative future in, in his own power then maybe that is the way to go forward but in terms of reestablish himself in hollywood it's basically done because if there's one thing we know about hollywood they're not very you know it's not it's not based on morals or ethics they're just afraid of losing sponsors and the fact that sponsors have completely run away from Callan and everything associated with him there's no way in hell those guys will align themselves with him because they don't want to say things happen to them but hey what do i know let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments i'd love to hear them and of course if it's your first time checking out the show make sure you click that subscribe button and smash that like i'll see you guys again very very soon peace